Many people use wood stoves or fireplaces to heat their home, some because they enjoy the atmosphere fire creates, some to save on heating costs. But there are potential health impacts from breathing wood smoke. Sarah Vaughn has the story. Uh, so you can see it's dried all uh, season for at least a year. And in it goes. Brian Garvey has been using a wood stove to heat his pre-Civil War home in Monroe County for 40 years. His fuel comes from his own 185 acres of forested land. Most of this wood is ash. We've had a lot of ash trees die because of the emerald ash borer. And so uh, the majority of you're seeing here is ash that's already been down or I took down standing dead. Garvey seasons the wood himself, drying it for at least a year because dry wood burns more efficiently. He says looking at and feeding a fire all winter long provides him with a certain connectedness, in the same way growing your own food connects you to a meal. You close it down to slow the oxidation for less air to uh, keep it from burning real hot. But burning anything sets off combustion, creating particulate pollution finer than the finest hair on your head. It goes really straight into your lungs and it lodges deeper there. And sometimes it can actually go through and it enter into your bloodstream, enter into places that you don't want it. Commodore says it's a combination of particulates and gases that makes up the threat. And then sometimes you can have uh, some of the particles like lodging together to become another particle because they just happen to um, react together and form something new that didn't even come out from that product. Threats such as volatile organic compounds, VOCs, and hydrocarbons containing benzene, which is a carcinogen. Commodore says repeated exposure creates what's referred to as insults to the cells, and eventually the body simply can't repair the damage anymore. Dr. Maylon Hahn says there is data suggesting exposure to wood-burning stoves is harmful to the lungs and may be associated with the common chronic lung condition, COPD. And while people typically think about it as being related to tobacco smoke, it actu in actuality, about a quarter of people who have COPD never, never smoked. And so we think those individuals, there's probably a huge combination of factors that contribute, but other environmental and noxious exposures are, are likely a, a significant contributor. And exposure when young leads to unhealthy outcomes. There is a lot of data that just pollution is bad. Pollution, just straight up, you know, pollution in pregnancy is bad. It's associated with um, worse um, infant outcomes. Han points to research indicating children exposed to ultrafine particulate matter not only are at increased risk for bronchitis and pneumonia, but can also develop defects. Han says our lungs continue to develop until about age 25. So depending on when and how long the cellular insults occur, they might impede lung development or in adults, speed lung decline. As he enjoys the warmth of his homegrown fire, Garvey says to his knowledge, his family's health hasn't been negatively impacted by wood smoke. But he took steps to guard against indoor air pollution when setting up his wood stove. To start, he made sure it had a baffle. And what that does is help oxidize volatile gases. Another way is to have obviously clean chimneys, tile lined and or stainless piping. Another is to have a good draw on your chimney. So you're pulling air, good strong pull of air, because you don't want smoke rolling back when you open the door. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Sarah Vaughn. The Environmental Protection Agency's mandatory smoke emission limit for wood stoves is two grams of smoke per hour. And you can find an explanation of the emission limit and guidance for choosing an EPA certified wood heater at epa.gov.